Did whales once walk on land? Yeah, we're just gonna skip to the end here because I'm both tired and lazy. Yes, but how did they do it? Let's fossil it out. <laughs> Walking whales. Not the weirdest thing to grace the earth, believe it or not. There has been an aquatic walking worm, but that's another episode. For now, to understand how the heck you get from this to this, yes, these two are in fact related, we gotta go to the family tree. So right at the top here begins the era of megafauna in the Paleocene and Eocene, the time when mammals basically exploded after the dinosaurs pieced out in a giant ball of fire about 60 million years ago. There were a ton of massive animals we now know are relatives of the whale. Masonicids, for example, who look an awful lot like a saber-toothed wolf, but share more relatives with a humpback. Another more closely related group were the entelodonts, who looked like pigs, or more accurately, pigs from hell. But if you watch episode four, you'll know that entelodonts are actually more related to hippos and whales than any pig. They also really kickstarted the undulates, which are all hoofed mammals, like horses, antelopes, or giraffes. So when you think about it, whales are more closely related to a giraffe than to a shark, though hippos are their closest living relatives. Speaking of hippos, around this time is when they decided to pull a yoko and split off from the group to evolve on their own path. Fun fact, one of the ancestors of the hippo, part of a group of animals called anthracotheres, was actually named Jagger Marix Naida, after the famed rock star Mick Jagger's huge lips. So moving on from these massively huge cousins, we get to the first illustrious ancestors of the whale, fated to produce the most massively huge, incredibly impressive group of animals, taking the title of most utterly enormous in the entire world, so without further ado, the first ancestor of the whale. It's a... It's a mouse deer. Meet Indohyus, an itty bitty mammal living around 50 million years ago who was the first evidence of the whale family taking to water. This little bean was a land mammal who had started to develop thicker bones, which act like ballast, which basically makes staying underwater easier, so it could spend more energy on swimming around. Paleontologists think that it probably dived into water to escape predators. Next up on the tree is Pachycetus. And here's where you first start seeing that slight whale family resemblance with that long head that kinda looks like a breadstick. Pachycetus kickstarted a group known as the Archaeocetes, primitive whales that lived mainly by riverbanks and lakes who hunted and swam in what's now Pakistan and India. Though Pachycetus was only about the size of a big poodle, it did have an ear bone completely unique to whales that's a stunning example of their progressive evolution. After Pachycetus, we have Ambulocetus, Cuchicetus, Rhodocetus, basically all of the Cetuses, as whales slowly said peace out to the land and adapted to the warm, tropical, tethy sea. This massive body of water existed between the two supercontinents, Laurasia and Gondwana, which split Pangaea in half after the dinosaurs got space barbecued. But enough of burning reptiles, it's time for a fossil fact. That Mosasaurus was pretty scary in the movie Jurassic World, but it was way over scale. At about 100 feet or 30 meters, this movie menace was the size of a blue or fin whale and twice as long as the biggest species of Mosasaur, the Tylosaur, which actually comes in at around 40 feet. No worries for you, horror fans. Lyoplorodon, another marine reptile, got even bigger than that with the four foot, 1.3 meter long skull with so many teeth that they exploded out the sides. Now out of the sea finally swims something familiar. Dorodon. That's what I'm talking about. This animal, living about 40 million years ago, finally looks like a whale without a pelvis attached to the vertebral column and entirely aquatic. Here's where things start getting a bit bigger, at 16 feet or 5 meters long, about the size of a modern day beluga whale. But even though Dorodon was starting to get more on brand, it was still a heterodont, meaning that teeth in different parts of its mouth look different, like us humans. Canines, molars, incisors, not like modern toothed whales, with mostly homodont or similar teeth. 
and Dorodon wasn't still exactly topping off the scales as far as size goes, probably able to be chewed on like a croissant by a modern-day sperm whale. But 35 million years ago, things changed. A creature so terrifying that if it were alive today, I would pack my things, move from the shore to North Dakota, dig a 20-foot hole, and live down there in a shipping container. Meet Basilosaurus. This incredible animal was 60 to 70 feet long at adulthood and 100% carnivorous. It lived in what's now North America with some species excavated in Egypt. It had an asymmetrical skull like many toothed whales today that use this for echolocation, but there's not enough evidence so far to definitively prove that Basilosaurus used this undersea party line. This awesome predator's reign didn't last long though as the warming of the Eocene favored mysticetes, or baleen whales, like humpbacks or blue whales, who were just starting to evolve right around the time Basilosaurus started to kick the bucket. Later on come the odontocetes, or toothed whales, like orcas or sperm whales, and soon the ocean is teeming with different species of modern-day whale. So there you have it, how you get from Bambi to Moby Dick and the story of walking whales. Hi, my name's Mike. Thank you for watching this ridiculous episode. If you enjoyed what you saw today, please like and subscribe. <laughs> Ow!